question. I'm saying that we need to start thinking why we believe what we believe. So you came with the belief that Jesus Christ is God. Yeah. Now, if you said to me, Jesus Christ said here in the Bible, because you seem like someone who studies the Bible, he's God, fair enough. If you said, oh, here is what the Bible says he's God, fair enough. But your belief that Jesus Christ is God isn't backed up biblically, nor is it backed up by Jesus Christ himself. So where does it come from? My belief is Jesus Christ isn't God. Mm. No in the Bible does Jesus Christ ever say, I am God, or does he say, worship me? In fact, the opposite is said. You know what the Bible says about that, yeah? That it's better for you to gouge out your eyes than to um, commit adultery with the eyes. Oh, I literally know her. Yeah, bro, the way you're looking, my bro. No, we're laughing at each other. Okay, no, I bro, promise bro. you, bro, have a go. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's another kind of word. That's another kind of word. But let's leave it. Like I said, I'm going to keep the conversation on theology. Yeah. <coughs> so you tell me um, why you believe Jesus Christ is God. If Jesus Christ never taught that, and the Bible doesn't teach that. Um, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is God. I mean, okay. And if you don't know, you want to go home, do your research and come back, that's fine. Because the fact of the matter is, um, I think my belief comes from the Qur'an and Sunnah. It's based on the Qur'an or the statements of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know sense? It's not something I saw in a dream, it's not someone else saw in a dream, it's not like none of that business. So if you believe something that Jesus Christ never taught, then I think it's important for you to back it up where that belief is coming from. Yeah? And you don't have to necessarily do it in this conversation, but at least I'll give you food for food. Because you was coming with um, another conversation you had with a Muslim friend of yours. Yeah. yeah. And he asked you a question, if Jesus Christ is God, how does he not know when the hour is? Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, that would be one of the questions I would ask as well. Because God has all knowledge, yeah. yeah, and Jesus Christ didn't have that knowledge, so he can't be God. So then, if Jesus Christ isn't God, then what is he? Is he like right, I st I've studied the Bible, but like not as much <laughs> as I should in order to have an end of conversation on this. Mm. But um, so if Jesus Christ was able to die on the cross and then mm. save us from our sins. Yeah. Only someone who is pure and like humans come from original sin. So like, how was how is God how is Jesus able to come and conceive by a woman who has original sin, uh, come into the world and um, die for our sins? Who like, how does someone die for our sins? And then did rises, Jesus Christ rises, ever say he's grave? gonna die on the cross for our sins? Um, and right now, if God didn't will for the sins to be gone, wiped out, would it still be wiped out? Because I would argue that the original sin, yeah, and Jesus Christ being pure, like even the Quran says Jesus Christ was pure, all the messages of God are pure. We believe that the prophet Jesus was a messenger of God, sent by God. We believe Moses was a messenger of God, sent by God. Abraham was a messenger of God, sent by God. The Prophet Muhammad was a messenger of God, sent by God. Yeah? So, Jesus Christ, you claim that he died on the cross for our sin. If you look deeply into it, you'll find that, look, even that theology doesn't make a lot of sense, with all due respect. Due to the fact that, what is the criteria for the blood sacrifice? And did Jesus Christ meet that criteria? It needs to be blemish free. Blemish you know free. that, yeah? What do you mean by blemish free? Like, for your sin? No, no, blemish as in like, you can't have no cuts or bruises. Imagine you've got a lamb. You can't get no lamb that's been beaten up. Yeah? Do you know this factually? Like, do you agree with me? About the lamb, the yeah. offering. Yeah. yeah, it needs to be. It needs to be like a yeah. good offering, right? Now, Jesus Christ, when he was, from your belief, he was, he died on the cross for our sins. Yeah, was he not beaten up? 
Right, but it's Jesus' offering. But that's what you're saying, he's a blood sacrifice, that is the offering. So that's why I'm saying that him dying on the cross doesn't make him divine. Doesn't make him good. Because what makes God good is to forgive without what's it called? There's a name man, my brain's not working. Um what's it called? Without a price. Does it make sense? So, imagine this, it's like, look, you, uh, I'm going to, God's going to forgive you of your sins, but then Jesus Christ needs to die on the cross. So it's not, it's not forgiveness, is it? There's, there's a compensation, there's a, there's a condition to it. God can just forgive without any, any conditions, without, without saying, oh, you need to give me something in return, without a price. Jesus Christ, Christians believe, paid the price. So it's not forgiveness then, is it? If someone has to pay the price. It's like, you owe me money. Yeah. Yeah? But I'm going to forgive your debt, but you have to give me a certain amount. Then I'm not forgetting your debt, am I? Everything is what? Is forgiveness? Yeah. Because I've been to me, I'm not like using semantics or just words in it, forgiveness. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's good, it's good to be articulate. So you ask me a question in regards to what do we believe Jesus Christ is, yeah? Oh, yeah. And even in the Bible, Jesus Christ articulates this to us, yeah? That you believe in the Bible, yeah? So, we um, have a question. So, you see the Trinity. So, the Trinity is Jesus is God. Uh, so, God is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, God is all those uh, persons in one. Yeah. So, th so, doesn't that mean that, doesn't that include Jesus being God then? That's if the teaching of trinity is found in the bible if G if trinity was taught by jesus christ so right now trinity basically means the father is god the son is god the holy spirit is god they're not three gods they're all equally god yeah? and i'm saying jesus christ never taught one. this jesus christ never taught this is there a way it's called the trinity in the bible i would argue no i would say that 300 years later this was put into it does that make sense so if Jesus Christ never categorically said Trinity and he never said I am God or I'm equal with the Father Where are you suggesting there's a concept of the Trinity in the Bible? Even come, though come. I think you've accepted that it doesn't say verbatim, mm. Christ didn't say that So mm. where do you suggest he says that? Or how do you then compromise those verses? Like Mark 12, 23, 18, where he says no, no, you don't know that one Where he says very clearly to describe it as scribe He runs up to Jesus and and he says to uh, uh, teacher, what is the greatest of all commandments? And he says, hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. How do you understand that? When he's saying that the Lord God, our Lord is one. Our. Plural. So he's referring to the scribe who, who, who he's speaking to. He asks him, what is the greatest of all commandments? He says in Mark's Gospel, 12, 28, hear thou, o, hear thou O Israel, your Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Oh, so him and the scribe Yes, exactly. One. Yeah, so he's referring to God as being one and he's referring to him as a scribe saying our. Our God is always one. There's other verses. Wait, our God is what as in like. The Lord our God, God precisely. Oh. And, it's and more powerfully the verse of John seventeen three. You've have you mentioned that already? No, you haven't. Do you want to mention that or yeah, take yeah? John 17, 3, what does he say in there? Very famous, but Muslims commonly like to use that verse as well. I don't know. Yeah, he says, for this, Christ says, for this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God, and whom you have sent, the messenger Jesus Christ. Just what is type in on your phone now, John 17, 3, because I think it's good for you to see it, so you know that we're not making it up. Well, we're the we can stop up from this. I think he recognizes the verse by just jogging his memory, but he probably can't put the number of the verse to it. Free information, Islam, most informative. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And you, thank you. So 
he's separating himself from God. Okay. He's separating himself from God, saying that so they may know the only true God, Jesus Christ, who they have sent. So God sent him. It goes hand in hand with Muslims. And who does God do? He sends prophets. Yes? As one who is sent by God as a conduit. Conduit means like a path to God. Now you made mention of the Trinity conceptually. Let's have it. Where? Oh, so oh, but the Trinity being a concept from the Bible. Think about this carefully. <laughs> Free information Islam perhaps. Free information Islam perhaps. Uh, okay, this is the okay. Like, you got the mic. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think in the Bible is a concept of like anyone saying that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God are all one being. I don't think there's a concept. Yeah, that's it. But, um, yeah there used to be one. It, it was in one John chapter five verse seven. One John. Yeah, it's first letter of John chapter five verse seven in the KJV. First, but you know, yeah, John. yeah, chapter five verse seven. But they've taken that verse out now from most of the Bibles because it's not in the original Greek manuscripts. Because it's not in the Greek original Greek manuscripts. You know I, don't the, know, I don't know too much. Like, yeah, but, yeah, but well, I can tell you the truth. Okay. 1 John 5 7, yeah. very famous verse, which apparently said the following There are three that bear witness in the heavens the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. It says that. It said that, yes, in the KJV. KJV? Yeah. Isn't that like the uh, most popular version? Not really, because it was a version which was made up from, from the um, in 10th, 11th century. Are you following what I mean? It was taken from the 10th, 11th century scripts, uh, the later editions of the manuscripts. So you, don't, you need to know your history for me to you know, inform yeah, you of that. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know that, then you know, you're going to be thinking, what's he talking about? Yeah, yeah. But if you, go, if you, for example, go on to 1 John 5, 7 in the NIV, which version do you like? Yeah, there's a, there's a footnote which says that that verse has been taken out because it's, um, it was not in the earlier manuscripts. So go to 1 John 5, 7 NIV. For there are three that testify. Yeah, carry on reading. Read it really loudly. Uh, for there are three that testify. That's literally what it says. Okay, must say some. Show me where is it? For there are three that testify. Where? Like five, seven. Yeah. So there are a few that just come there. Um, and, and what's next? Oh, then it goes to eight. The spirit, yeah. the water, the blood. I, mean, I don't know where it's going there, but this is common. Everyone knows this. Everyone who's watching, they know about this. That there used to be a verse there called one John. But usually on on this Bible, they would have a footnote. The foot, you know, a footnote is, don't you? On a footnote, they would say that this verse is not to be found in the earlier Greek manuscript. Let me show you from this, from the um, study Bible. Okay, here you are. So, for example, this is what I said to you earlier. This is from BibleHub.com. They say, for there are three that testify, the spirit, the water and the blood, and these three are one. So here there used to be this verse. Late manuscripts of the Vulgate testify in heaven, the Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one, and there are three that testify on earth, not found in any Greek manuscript before the 14th century. Oh, so, so, so the one, one verse, in. yes, yes. <laughs> by Eusebius in the 15th century, a Dutch scribe who was entered, forced to enter it by um, by the Catholic clergy who forced forcibly entered it to him. So the Greek manuscripts, the, the, the earliest one known as the Codex Synacticus and the Codex Vaticanus, 
yeah and the later ones are, are much later known as the, 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 the Vulgate edition and the um, other, other text so um, they were taken so the KJV took these from that particular from a chap called William Tyndale so anyway this is like giving you history all I want you to be aware of is no, that was added in. it was added in so we, what you need to understand my friend is that who is God according to the Bible? It's very, oh, very. According to the Bible, not just belief at all. No, according to you, what I want you to understand is who is who is God and who is Christ. Christ calls himself a prophet in the Bible. Are you aware of that? Which is what we believe. Jesus in Mark chapter six verse four, in Matthew chapter twenty-one verse eleven, in John chapter seventeen verse three, in Luke, yeah, he relentlessly says that he's a prophet of God, which is what we believe as Muslims. Make sense? Let me ask you a question. Think about this carefully. Do you believe that a human being, a man, can be the almighty God? Will that resonate with your internal heart? A limited human being. Will it resonate with you from your internals, internally inside of you, that the almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the irresistible, the one, the supreme, he can be a man? Yes, I can believe that. You can believe that. Okay, so what's stopping you becoming a Hindu today? They believe the same thing, essentially. <laughs> I know you laugh, but the laugh, you laugh, but think about this carefully before you laugh. They believe about the same thing about their deities, their major figureheads, Vishnu. Oh, you Ra mean like straight for? Yeah. Do you mean like be a man as in like born human being? Yeah, like a human being, like or, coming or, as a man. What you saying can be a man? Yeah, because the Bible itself testifies that uh, that God is not a man. In Numbers twenty-three nineteen, and and in. Um, Hosea 11.9 What is about originality, like God originally being a man or... No, no, what I'm saying to you, does it, does it sit well with you that yeah. our Creator, God Almighty, can be a, a man? I mean... Does that sit well with you? Bear in mind 1 Kings 8.27 says, The heavens and the earth, they cannot contain God, much less the temple. So these are preposterous ideas that our Creator can, is, is, is a man, comes as a man. Does that make sense to you? Think about this carefully. Logically speaking, logically speaking, no, it doesn't really make much sense. Good. But like, you can also take into consideration that God can do everything. So yeah, fair enough. But there's some, okay, if you argue that point, but then God will lay that claim which you've made to the, uh, to the side by saying that God is not a man. Numbers, so that it, so if, if you've accepted, which is very um, humble of you to accept that, it doesn't make logical sense. Mm -hmm. But then you are to say afterwards, well, yeah, you know what, um, um, it, it, he can still become theoretically, they say theoretically a man. Mm -hmm. However, that is dismissed by the fact that the Bible itself says that God is not a man. God is not a man. Yeah, so therefore wait, that dispels wait, that notion. Where does, where does the Bible, where in the Bible does it say God is not a man? Yeah, in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, so and in Hosea chapter God 11, verse 9. Okay, two references I've given to you there. God is, God is not, but like they're saying God is not a man, that's just, yeah, yeah, I can also agree that God himself, yeah. though, like, but obviously, like, in the, like, in the flesh, yeah. in Genesis, yes. God is obviously not a man, Yes. but like, God can be a man. No, that's what we're trying to say to you. This yeah. is, when you're saying God can be a man, yeah. but that's, that is nominally rejected by the verses in itself. You can't then put your view on that when God is himself saying, I'm not a man. So therefore he cannot be, if God is not a man, he he's cannot not, be a man. It he's makes not sense. a man, but he can be a man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but then you can say, well, why can't he become a little ant on the floor then? But will that fit, will be the almighty? I mean, I mean he can do whatever he wants. Like. Yeah, but there's certain things he doesn't do, you see. Yeah. Can God lie? Think about this carefully. Can God lie? Well, I'm trying to <laughs> from what I know from the Bible, he said he can't look at you. So therefore, but from what I know, it's only logical that I would have to say I would have to say he won't. But no, but, but because, can't, because can't. that is an oxymoron within itself, yeah, yeah. that the Most Holy can lie himself. That yeah, would be oxymoron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore, he can't lie. You see, can God build up a rock? Can God make a rock that he can't lift? It's a very. It's, it's the antithesis of what God is. The All Powerful now becomes limited by the fact that he can't lift up a rock. It's what you call. Idiomatically, um, that won't make sense. Idiomatically it means within the definition, it wouldn't make sense. But couldn't you make it so that like he can't lift the rock when he made the rock? No, because this would go against the very concept of the Almighty God, an all-powerful yeah, Almighty. But but this would be def definitively you argue to the contrary. Yeah. It's like it's like saying a, a, a married bachelor. Does that make sense to you? 
My bachelor, I don't know what a bachelor is. Bachelor is someone who's not married, oh, like a bride, just walk in. Like, like this guy walking, he may be a bachelor. Yeah, right? But yeah, if he says I'm a married... Speaking, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Exactly. So speaking, but I want to talk about God, you need to just reject logic. Yeah, but then, then that's what I'm trying to explain to you. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. if you do reject that logic, you're looking for substantiation to that logic, then you realise that God himself says that I am not a man. And therefore, if he's not a man, that tells you that he cannot come as a man. Because that's the same thing, it's definitively the same thing. It's like then saying, why can't he be an ant or why can't he be a worm? Which is not the majesty of our Creator. You see what I mean? So what we invite you to is Almighty God. The God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the God of Muhammad. Peace be upon them. They worship one God alone. Hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. Why do you call me good? There is no one good except for God alone. My favourite verse of the Bible. Mark chapter 10 verse 17. Mark chapter 10 verse 17. A rich... No, a, a rich, what did the verse say? A rich, why do you call me good? Why do you call me... When Christ say, when, let me explain the story to you. Check this out. You're an intelligent young man, so you should be able to assess it within one second. A rich a, a scribe runs up to Jesus and he says to him, Good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? There is nobody good except for God alone. Let's go through that again. The, the, yeah, the rich young man runs up to Jesus. Good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Christ says to him, why do you call me good? There is nobody good except for God alone. So he's saying, why are you calling me good? It's not worthy of me. Only God is good. Hence, he can't be God. If, I was, if, if there's four of us here, I was to say to you, you're the only good football player here. By definition, that would exclude me, wouldn't it? You're the only, yeah. If you also say you the only. are the only good football player, by definition, this will exclude me. It will exclude my... <laughs> won't it? It does, it does. Yeah. So this is what we're saying. And then when, when, when Jesus says, when the, Jesus gives him the, um, tells him what to do to get the eternal life, by keeping the commandments, he says to him, teacher, I've kept this since I was a boy. So even then, he drops the title good and simply calls Jesus teacher. He's understood, therefore, that when I call Jesus good initially, he's rebuked me. So when I redress him, I simply call him teacher. Follow what I'm saying? You just read really, really it very carefully and all, it'll all come out. I understand. There's nothing in I, what we say to Christians. There is not one verse in that, in your religious book, where Jesus says he's God. Fair enough. Jesus is not God. Okay, brilliant. So what do you now believe about him then? Uh, I mean... He's a prophet. Let the man speak for himself. If I was to, if your friends, if, if, me, if me and your friends are going to watch this later, you're going to show your friends later, you're going to become a popular band. So if we were to show you later, listen, that the all, um, that um, we're speaking, and you have to speak, I've got to let you speak. Let, let the man speak for himself. So this is when we say in Mark, I've already told you the references, Mark chapter 6 verse 4, Matthew chapter 21 verse 11, Christ is referred to as a prophet, which is the Islamic narrative. Make sense? Inviting you to worship God alone. Actually, yeah. Actually, I say that. I say that. I take that statement back. Okay, go ahead. Jesus is God. Okay, show it. Show it then. I can't show it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't show it, but you believe it. I can't show it, but I believe it. They say, listen, there's a saying, there's a saying that says... They're having too much fun here. I need yeah. To <laughs> you need to see what's going on. So, in effect, um, uh, you know, there's certain things that you say, or you do say, but you can't prove it. Mm -hmm. And they say, God is not the author of confusion. And the Bible says, prove all things. Yeah, so you've got to prove that my friend, you can't believe it free. I will say to you, if I will say to you, black slavery history never happened, what are you going to say to me? You're going to prove it to me. I'm going to go and say it never happened, I did making it up. But you're going to say no man, here's evidence. So you've got to believe it. You know there's a counter history to black slave history. They were saying we didn't do it because we hated black people. And the evidence, you know what the evidence that they give to some sort, you know when the Europeans, they took black people as slave trade, in the slave trade from West Africa to the Caribbean and to the Americas. And afterwards, people understood it was because they hated you because of the color of your skin or, or your features. They say, no, no, this wasn't the case. Because when we took our criminals from here and we shipped them across to Australia, same thing happened, they were enslaved as well. Are you following what I'm saying to you? So that's their site. They're going to say to me, no, this is the evidence for it. Because the evidence becomes overwhelming. So when you then say to me that Jesus is God and you've taken that statement back, now let's hear it. Where is the evidence? And you say you can't prove it. Fair enough. I don't want to like strangulate your, um, you know, perhaps uh, study. Yeah, but he doesn't trust me. I've read it. He doesn't say that anywhere. Okay, cool. Now what happened? You're a young, intelligent young man. How old are you? About 17? 16. 16, 17. Okay. So basically speaking, what happens then if you just it's like it's like reading an English text? Teacher says to you in English literature, okay, you guy, you gotta go in. What's your name? 
Rob, so Rob, you've got to go into the, your text, take out the information. What is this individual saying in relation to the topic being discussed? So what happens then? The Christians have misunderstood all the verses in the New Testament, where they think Jesus is claiming to be God, but when you examine it, he's saying something different. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Yeah. yeah so when you examine all those texts, the man does not claim to be God in any way, shape, or form. You, what usually happens is when people then say, "Oh, well, you know, the Jews wanted to kill him." because he was um, claiming to be God. Yeah, John 10.30, John 8.58. Yeah, but when you read the context, he's just trying to say, if I was to say to you, me and you are one, does this mean we're the same person? You say me and you are, me and Rob are one. What does it mean to be one? Exactly, so when you read the context, it determines that. It means we are one in our conversation to get to the okay. truth. Does not mean we're the same person? See what I mean? So this is common um, uh, the language used to substantiate these particular points. So hence, we cannot therefore go and say, oh, Jesus said the Father and I are one, hence I am, he is God. No, read the context. The context will determine what exactly. So then all he's saying to the Jews, the disbelieving Jews, he said, no, listen, you, you reject me. I'm, you're not of my sheep. Those who do follow, they are my sheep. So God who has sanctified and sent me. So they, that is in that reference he's making the claim, the Father and I are one. You see what I mean? I understand. Yeah. So you got, that's all you've got to do, my friend, and it makes all logical sense. It makes logical sense, yeah. yeah. So therefore, what I would think you to do, I know it's very hard to let go of something which is untrue, but Bob Marley, one very famous um, yeah, no, reggae man, he once said, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. You heard of that, you heard of that before? That's what he said. Yes. So I'm, stand up, stand up, he said that in. So what I'm saying, yeah, go on. What's the, so like, what's the difference between Christianity and Islam? So, uh, the, well, I mean, there are, do you know there are a lot of Christians who don't believe in Jesus as God, number one. Right? So our other differences that we have is in the, um, we don't believe that he died for your sins. And secondly, um, those... Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, like, in the Bible, does it say that Jesus died for our sins? No. It doesn't say in the Bible that Jesus died for our sins. Or so, so, like, yeah. Uh, so what it said, like, for example, we know, because Christians commonly understand I think this is, the, this is the understanding of Paul. Paul is the one who's propelled this, that Jesus dies for your sins and he's nailed Christianity to the cross. Are you following what I'm saying to you? But that's not what he preached. He preached that the, that the kingdom of heaven is to how to attain to how to get to God, like the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Are you following what I'm saying to you? That is what he invited people to, worshipping the almighty God alone. So this concept of um, a sacrificial atonement, Luke's gospel doesn't, doesn't present that even. In, in Luke's gospel, he doesn't even speak about this. This is a different theology altogether. So um, what we're essentially learning that Christ came for the uh, lost sheep of the house of Israel only. He didn't come for the Gentiles. He didn't come for me or you. What does he say in, in Mark's gospel? Go not forth to the Gentiles, for I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He only came for the Jews to bring them back to worshipping God because they had transgressed from worshipping God. That's why he was so angry against the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they were leading the people astray. Are you following what I'm saying? So he stood up to them to bring those Jews back to worshipping God and God alone. Does this make sense? What do you think? Does Islam make sense to you? Islam means submission to the will of the Almighty God who is not like his creation. So God is not a man. He's not a woman. He's not an idol. He's not a statue. It's the Almighty. He's beyond the universe. Nothing in the heavens and the earth can contain God. Much less a, much less a little temple. So we invite you to the worship of the God Almighty alone. It's the worst what Islam teaches. God sent messengers, Abraham, Moses, Jesus. The final message, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the messenger for all of mankind. All of mankind, as I say. <laughs> That's what we invite you to. So we pray five times a day. You know how we pray, don't you? Uh, we start with hand and go down to your knees. First, we, what we do, we do it, we go like that, Allahu Akbar, put our hands as such, then after making some recitation, which is not too dissimilar to the Lord's Prayer, we then bow, we then bow by bowing our back, like this, glorifying our Creator. Then we stand up, then we go back into the prostration by going on our hands and knees and putting our nose and, and, and forehead to the ground. So that's also in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 4 and 6. That's how they prayed as well. Read up Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah, yeah. yeah, Nehemiah. 
Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 4 and 6 where they prayed exactly like we do. Do you know before we pray what we do? Before we pray we have a little wash. Wash our hands, finish by washing our feet. That's how they did it in Deuteronomy. Moses would wash his hands, finish by washing his feet. They take their, they take their shoes off before he enters the holy ground. And they start line up in con congregation, shoulder to shoulder, standing like this. Zephaniah oh, yeah. chapter 3 verse 9. Zephaniah 3 verse 9 Then calling people to the prayer Call in a melodious tone We've got the Adhan The call to, the call to prayer So it all amalgamates and finishes in Islam Islam means submission To the will of the almighty God Submission To the will of almighty God So we say everyone So all the prophets were Muslims Abraham was a Muslim Jesus was a Muslim Because definitively Islam means submission to the will of God almighty Oh, yeah, by definition. definition. So when we say, for example, when Jesus says, I do not do my will, but the will of God who sent me. Of my own free will, I can do nothing. So I hear as I judge, and my judgment comes from God. For I seek not to do my will, but the will of God who sent me. So if he was God, fully human and fully divine as you believe, he would have had a will. He would have said, no, this is my will as well. But no, he said, I do not do my will, but the will of God, which shows a distinction between the two entities. Rob, 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 this is the time to come to Islam. Lots of people <laughs> are converting to this religion, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I you know, know, I know, particularly from the Afro-Caribbean community as well. But many of all different, I'm not just going to exclusively make it for a particular race. However, lots of people are becoming Muslim, all different backgrounds. One of my English friends is going to be coming shortly. He became Muslim about seven, about three months ago in, in Whitechapel Station. And it's white, white because it makes sense, Rob. It makes sense. That the, that the Lord, that the God Almighty can be a man. No, sir. God Almighty is not a man. You understand? That's a blasphemy. To utter this against the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We are limited. We are limiting our creator to ourselves. So I want you to think about that. I know it's going to be some time. At least yeah, think about it. Of course, of course. We've got Qurans on the table. Take a free copy. Take some literature. I have, I really have one. Read it. Compare and contrast. If you've got any questions, we're here every Wednesdays, 5.30 onwards. Yeah. Come round, yeah? Oh, Wednesday. Bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. Yes, bring him along. Yeah, just bring him. Say, listen, these guys are here. Down, cool. down you... next to next to my auntie's house. Yeah. Okay, cool. Bring him if you want to. We can have a chat with him. Let me see if I can go bring him. Yeah, bring him. I'm here. We're here. Bring him along. Oh, we're here for about two, three hours yet. Two, three hours here. Yes. So roughly around about nine o'clock. Okay. Think about what I said carefully. You don't have yeah. completely taken in. I'm sure you're intelligent, young man, so no doubt about that, you will have taken that in. Okay. Makes make sense. Aligns well, yes? Aligns well. But just, we've got some more literature if you want to take some. Let, let me show it to you. Let me show you some more things. 